We are awakening together. This is our weekly gathering we hold online. For more information, visit our website, awakening-together.org. We'd love to see you there. Good morning and welcome to Awakening Together's weekly gathering. It's wonderful to be here with all of you. Um, so right now I'm going to read our statement of purpose. We are an assembly of equals joined in common purpose, awakening to one true self. With an appearance of many faiths, many cultures, and many symbols, we seek to discern one truth and to rest in its embrace. The core value that I chose for my sharing today is core value number five. We accept all forms as temporary appearances permitted through enduring self, uh, enduring awareness of self. We live this value by honoring all appearances and all experiences while continually reflecting on changeless truths. Thing is. Right now we're going to, I'm going to ask Sina if she can play the first song that I chose. Um, the first song I chose is Karma Police by Radiohead. I, I, I love Radiohead and I've always loved this song. And I think that this video demonstrates perfectly what it feels like when the ego mind grabs hold and is followed and believed. So I'm going to Take us into prayer. Holy Mother, Father God, thank you for this time we're spending here together. May it be used for clarity, understanding, and peace. May our hearts open and receive what is ours to receive. Amen. I'd like now to ask Lynn Castaldo to share our readings for today. Good morning. I'll be reading from the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament, if you would like to grab your book. It starts with NTI Mark chapter 5 on page 76. So I'll be reading um, from Mark and then also from John. Verses 1 through 20. The next morning, Jesus and the apostles stepped ashore in an area near some burial tombs. The apostles were hungry, so Jesus led them up a path looking for something to eat. A woman on morning errands approached them and recommended they choose another path. There is a demon-possessed man living there among the tombs, she pointed he is very dangerous. The men have tried chaining him for our safety, but he always breaks away. The apostles were afraid of this woman's story and urged Jesus to select another path. Have you learned nothing? Jesus asked with a teasing smile. The son of God has nothing to fear. Just then, the man the woman spoke of showed himself from behind a bush. He began circling the small group cursing God and pointing up to the sky. The apostles stepped closer together, wondering how the master would handle this situation. Jesus smiled at the enraged man. You have nothing to fear. We come in peace. Peace, ha, the man mocked. I heard you talking. You are the son of God. And then the man continued his insane cursing of the Lord, this time pointing directly at Jesus. And who are you, Jesus asked in a friendly and casual tone. I am the demons, the man answered, a legend of them. You cannot touch me. My power is greater than yours, son of God. Yes, I imagine it is, Jesus said. The apostles were shocked by his manner and words. I imagine that you have the power to do whatever you wish on your own choice. Of course I do, screamed the man. Then I should like to see you leave this man, Jesus said. Then we would be homeless, screamed the man, as if he truly thought himself to be a legend of demons. Jesus stepped closer to the man, but only a little. 
He knew the man was frightened in spite of his ferocious appearance, and Jesus did not want to frighten him anymore. Jesus only wanted to help the man see that his, in, his sanity was within him, and his insanity was foreign to him, so insanity could be let go. Jesus noticed a herd of pigs in the distance. He pointed them out to the man. I would like to see that you are truly a, legend, a legion of demons and not just one. Can you leave this man and inhabit that herd of pigs? Of course we can, the man replied. We can do anything. All right, then, smiled Jesus. Go into the pigs and show that you have truly left. Let me talk to this man without you. The man turned to face the pigs, screaming insanity at the Lord as he did. Then he quieted and smiled a proud smile as if he had accomplished something great. Is this the man before me now? Jesus asked. It is, answered the man, still using a proud tone that led the apostles to feel suspicious. Jesus walked to the man and put his arm around him. Let's go for a walk and talk a bit, just you and me. The man went with Jesus. The apostles watched as Jesus and the man knelt under a tree, ripping pieces of grass with their hands, talking quietly. After some time, Jesus and the man returned to the group. Josiah had agreed to go home. Uh, Josiah has agreed to go home, Jesus announced. He will support, he will have support there and will be able to continue his healing. Come, let's walk with him. We may find food there, Jesus coaxed. So Jesus and the apostles walked Josiah home, talking with him in a friendly and cordial way. They walked past the herd of pigs, who relaxed peacefully in the warming morning sun. They walked past local villagers, who were shocked by what they saw. And they took Josiah to his family, so, who were so overjoyed to see their father in this way. Jesus spent some time talking to Josiah's wife, giving her advice, instructions, and shared teachings. She seemed to listen to Jesus eagerly. When Jesus and the apostles left, Jesus felt confident that Josiah and his entire family would allow themselves to be healed. He left the family in the hands of the Holy Spirit, grateful that he had run across this loving family. Now we're going to turn to NTI John chapter 9 on page 198. So I will be reading chapter 9 and chapter 10. Open to your heart. Let the voice within the heart lead ahead of the mind. When the mind disputes the heart, let the mind, I'm sorry, yeah. When the mind disputes the heart, let the mind rest. Answer the mind thusly. I do not know what I do not know. And so I cannot answer your questions. I know only what I have been led to know. Because I choose to know it, I can see. When, one, uh, when one's eyes are opened by the guidance of his heart, he becomes witness to that which he has welcomed. Through him, others see what he has seen. Whether they accept or not accept it into the filter of their mind is their choice based on their willingness. But they shall see what is witness to them, and what they see shall be saved in their heart until they are ready to acknowledge it. In this way, all men welcome the light together. When everyone gives, when everyone gives welcome and accepts its message, all give welcome to him. But if some are not willing to see what they have welcomed beyond the trap of their mind, their heart welcomes it for them and saves it there. So that which is welcomed is not lost. Pass no judgment on what you see. For when you pass judgment, you pass what you see through the filter you have made within the mind. Viewed through this filter, 
the thing you see will be distorted. It will not be the same thing that it is. It will be that which you have asked to see and what you have designed to see through the web of filters you have made. To see clearly and to see all things as they truly are, bypass the mind. Look with the heart. The light that shines from the heart sees not for explanation or proof or sense or control. It says only this, show me that I may believe. And it accepts what it is. What it's shown without questioning it, because it is its will to welcome the light. It is its will that the light be fully be welcomed fully. And NTI John chapter 10. I am the way, and the thoughts that came before were not. You spent many years listening to the thoughts that came before me and they have given you nothing. I am the way because I am the light, and the light is the way of life. Open to me, listen to me. Tune out all other voices by letting go of all other thoughts. The time has come to listen only onto the light. How is it that I am known? I am the light, and so I carry with me the characteristics of the light, and only the characteristics of light. You will not find fear in me. You will find only love. You will not find attack and war. You will find only peace. You will not find guilt or accusation. You will find only sweet forgiveness that sees that which is meaningless as meaningless and asks it to take on no meaning. You can trust my voice because you recognize it it as yours and you know it is yours. I am the light, the light of which you are. We are the one and the same and you are me. And so you know me and you recognize your desire to remember me as all that you are. Thank you, Lynn. That was beautiful. I'm so grateful for the the readings I was guided to share today because it just, it speaks so perfectly to what I will be sharing. So the title for today's sharing is The Bottomless Pit. I've recently been experiencing um, chronic hives, which have been a part of my life since I was 15 years old. Up to now, it's been, um, up to now, it's never been figured out what the cause is. So it's been labeled auto, an autoimmune problem. They would come on intensely for months, even years, lasting sometimes for years. The last time it happened, it lasted for two years, and then go into remission. It's been six years since the last outbreak. The last few weeks, they have hit very hard, resistant to all histamines, um, And I'd like to share what came up for me through that experience. Looking back now, what I'm about to share, I see clearly that what unfolded um, was an experience of the split mind. Despite the ego storm that rose with all its ideas and effort to convince me I was no longer a spiritual person, that I had finally come to the end of the road and that there was no turning back, I see now there was something else behind the scenes holding it all as it played out, waiting for my surrender. Of course, the ego was blind to it all. It couldn't see the light that was there the whole time. At that time, I was believing everything the ego mind was feeding me. 
I was in a very vulnerable state, both physically and mentally. I see how in that state, it was easy to fall down into that dark hole that I found myself in. The hives had started up again um, a month ago, and at its most intense, uh, it becomes so debilitating that there's no relief to be found. And no amount of antihistamines, no amount of any medication helps, no amount of ointments rubbing on my body, nothing helps. Um, and it had come to an extreme point that all I can do was lay in bed covered in welts, my face, lips, hands, and feet swollen. What was being felt in this body was constant itching, burning pain, and nothing brought comfort. All I can do was lay there, feeling it all in desperation. There was a lot of anger and resentment that came up. I had no interest or desire to turn to spiritual practice for comfort. I had no interest in my usual go-tos of spiritual podcasts, awakening together audios, or reading any of my spiritual books. I didn't even have any desire to go into the sanctuary. It came to the point that I started questioning everything. I started questioning my spirituality. I started questioning if even awakening together was for me anymore. At the time, I, or better yet, the ego saw this as you see when your back is pressed up against the wall, your true colors show. You are this angry, resentful person. This spiritual crap is not for you. You're not even using it. You're not even using it when you need it the most. You suck at this. Spirituality doesn't care about you. Your spiritual community doesn't care about you. And ultimately, God doesn't care about you. All I could do was lay there in pain with all these dark thoughts, all the while cursing and hating God. I was that angry man in NTI Mark chapter 5. I was the rage-filled, demon-possessed man full of pain, resentment, and anger. It was an experience of hell in that moment. I even welcomed death, anything to escape what was happening. The mind kept telling me all kinds of stories and providing evidence for its case. It would say, the highs will be here for another two years like last time. You will be in hell for the next two years and no thing and no one will make it go away or make it better. I couldn't see anything beyond the thoughts and what was being experienced in the body. At that point, after going along with all the thoughts that had been playing out about what was happening and about God, there came a belief that I couldn't turn to God because God had turned his back on me. I started following all the thoughts that questioned everything. Was any of my spiritual practice true? Was the truth true? Was there even a God? How could God allow this kind of pain and suffering? All throughout those days, any kind of spiritual offering that came my way, especially from my mom who was helping me through all of this, was met with rejection. I wanted none of it. The ego saw that rejection as proof that I had lost my way and it was over for me. I had gone to the dark side and there was no turning back. At its worst one night, I just gave up. It was like the tantrum had burned itself out and I was still. At the time it felt like defeat. I give up, there's nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. All I can do is be here with all of it. The thought even came of maybe death will come and I'm okay with that. But now I see it was a surrender to it all. And with the surrender came a softening and something shifted. Let's 
Sorry. I lost my place. I woke up in the morning um, with a desire for clarity and resolution. Um, there was a willingness for something else. Every little bit of willingness began um, chipping away at the armor I had find my I had found myself in. More and more clarity started seeping through, and love started flowing in. I was then able to see how God had always been there, even when ego was screaming, angry, and scared. I could see that one of the things that ego used as proof of my spiritual failure of rejecting all spiritual practices was truth guiding me away from my spiritual go-tos. What was seen as rebellion and failing was actually needed in that moment. I was able to see how behind it, behind it all was a gentle, no, let's not run away and hide from this by covering it up with spiritual talks or reading. I know now that it would have been used as a spiritual bypass and would leave me empty. I just needed to allow it all, even the ugliest parts. I then became overjoyed when I realized spirit had been guiding me all throughout the darkest moments. It was always there. With that realization, love then rushed in and I was able to see immense amounts of love and support that had been there with me every step of the way. No matter how much I cursed God and hated him, he never left me. With that realization grew a stronger connection and trust. I directly knew that no matter how dark it can seem and feel, light and love is always there, holding me in my pain, loving me through the experience of illusion, holding space for it all. No matter how messy it gets or dark it looks, life, source, God, is using it all for our awakening. Nothing is wasted. I see, I see now how many lies were being believed when I was going through it all. The lies took center stage, but they were allowed to build upon themselves as something here still within watched them all. With that clarity came clear seeing of a long held pattern that has played here for a lifetime. This is where the bottomless pit comes in. I had shared about my recent experience um, on the Tuesday nights that I share on As I Am. And I remember seeing how there was love and validation given uh, with what had been shared. Uh, there was confirmation as to um, what had been shared with everyone was received and welcomed. And with that, immediately, I saw the ego thoughts, which were, yes, I did it. I got it. They love me. But it only lasted for a split second because it was waiting for the next one and the next validation. It wasn't even taking in what it wanted. I sat in amazement watching all this. I was amazed at how deep that pit of wanting went. At that moment, I realized that it could never, ever be filled. For the first time in my life, I was able to see that no matter how much praise was given, how much accolades received, how much love and acceptance was given. It was always overlooked, waiting for the next one and the next. It would, it would feel, it would never feel full. It would be impossible to fill it up. My God, I saw it was a fruitless path. I can no longer take its hand. I can no longer follow it. I see now how it will take me nowhere. It will, it will be just a never-ending search 
that can never be filled. I was so incredibly grateful for being able to see that. After that, I was able to see how it all plays out with everything in my life, that desire to um, fill something up that's just impossible to fill up. I saw it um, with the with the reading I chose for today. Something inside felt very uncomfortable when I chose the reading. I saw I saw it was an ego preservation a strategy of saving face, of wanting to be perceived a certain way, of looking good, of not being perceived in the wrong way, all in the name of what it thinks is acceptable. Being seen as the ego would like to be perceived. So the ego, you know, the ego thoughts that start coming up when I read that first, when I was guided to, um, to Mark um, chapter five, because I was just, um, I was questioning, I'm like, is this really what, what you want me to share? Um, because all the thoughts that started coming up was, no, I don't want them to think I'm a Jesus freak. No, they're going to believe that you believe in all these parables and these stories when you know that they are not true. We are here doing practical things. We want to focus on more practical, useful things than in Bible stories to share a message. They're going to judge you. And right there, I knew this was to be the reading I was to share because after seeing all that unattainable desire, I realized I no longer was willing to follow that voice that controls every move, every word I say, in order to be accepted, to be loved, in order to be validated. Because I see it is a bottomless pit. It's never ending. It could never be filled. I choose no longer to, li to listen to this voice that tells me I will keep you safe if you just stay in this little cell. If you just stay in this little bubble and do as I tell you, you'll be safe. You'll be loved. You'll be accepted. You'll be invited. You'll be a part of. I clearly see what a complete lie it all is. I just, it just keeps spinning me in circles, chasing after its own tail, no matter how much validation is given. It's never, ever, ever enough. I also saw this bottomless pit play out every time I looked in the mirror. It's the first voice pattern feeling that rises up. Are you pretty today? Does your skin look better? Do you look skinnier? Is your face aging? Will you be seen as attractive and acceptable? It is obsessed with appearance. I saw that no matter how attractive I can make this face and body appear, it would never be enough. It would always find something wrong, something to criticize. It cannot be satisfied. It will never be full. This is a fruitless endeavor. Do I want to take this hand and go on an endless path? Do I want to follow these words and thoughts? When clearly seen, the definite answer is no. There is nothing for me here but pain, separation, and torture on an endless loop. I choose to take the hand of something else. I don't know what exactly that something else is, but I know what I no longer want to follow. It has been seen through. The curtain has been pulled back. What was thought to be the great Oz has been revealed to be a scared, confused set of rules based on nothing. There is no solid foundation. It can only crumble in my seeing it for what it is. And then that something else that 
has always been here can rise up to be seen. How perfect is the line in the song, Amazing Grace. I was blind, but now I see. It still comes up every time I look in the mirror. It still comes up all the time. It speaks and the tug of approval, uh, approval seeking rises. But now I've seen. Now I can ask the question, is this really real? Is this the path I would like to follow? Has it ever been satisfying? Will it give me what I want? Will I feel happy and at peace? I turn to the Holy Spirit for help when it plays out again and again. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me with this ego desire that rises up. It wants to be fed. It looks for approval and validation to feel safe and secure. The validation it seeks is huge. It's a bottomless pit that can never be filled. No amount of praise, love, and acceptance by others by others will ever be enough for it. Help me pull away from this unfillable desire of the personality ego mind. It is a desire and want that can never be filled. How do I let it go? I see how it was, how it has been made into an idol. This has been a lifelong idol. And the subject of idols had come up with, um, I think, some of the early teachings that we go over, Re Regina's teachings. And I clearly saw at that moment how I had made or this ego had made an idol of itself. Like it just... <sighs> It just needs to follow all these rules and all these um, all these things that it feels like um, will bring it what it desires. Um, it, it just It was kind of hard to kind of accept that, that it had, that I had made it into an idol. Um, but I'm glad that I was able to see it. Um, by seeing it for what it is. Um, well, you know, when I asked spirit for help, um, what I got from spirit was, um, spirit said, by seeing it for what it is, Remind yourself as much as you need to of its fruitless desire. It's easy to let it go when you clearly see it is impossible to fill. You will be searching and desiring for something that is not possible to fill forever. Do you see that? Yes. That desire and want is impossible to feed and satisfy even when it has happened and it lasts for a split second, waiting for the next one to validate, love, and accept. And even when it gets what it wants, it quickly pushes past it and does not let it in. It is endless, wanting. It is insanity. And I'm, I'm very grateful for seeing that. Do I really want to listen to that voice? Do I really want to continue to put my attention, my awareness, my safetyhood, my worthiness on that? To place it in that thing's hands. It can never give me what it wants and what I want. And what is it that I want? What is it that I want? I want peace, freedom, love, acceptance, worthiness. None of it can be found there. 
none. It's not bad. It just has been this thing that was made that just churns and churns and calls for more and more. It has been made into this all-consuming desire that can never be filled. I no longer choose to follow it. I no longer want to listen to it. It has nothing to give in my worth, in my beauty, in who I am. It has taken me a lifetime until this moment to see that. It can never give me what I truly desire. The desire and ability to let it grow, uh, to let it go, grow stronger every time I see it for what it is. So um, I'm just very moved, um, get very emotional <clears throat> with that seeing um, because it's something that has been with me as far as back as I can remember and has controlled every action, um, every doing or not doing. And I can sense the real freedom in that and letting that go. And despite, um, despite uh, the fear that may rush in, because of the, because of continuously practicing and following that voice. Um, but there's something now that, now that the veil has been pushed to the side and there's been clear seeing, um, it helps fuel that desire of not following it anymore despite how the ego may yell you're going to make a fool out of yourself you're going to look bad you're going to be shunned or left alone i've gotten into the point that i i'm okay with that if that's what happens <laughs> um because it's it's just not worth it anymore it's just not worth it um, and, um, I wanted to share from seven steps to awakening, uh, quote 329 and what I wrote, what came for me. Um, the quote says, even as an unreal nightmare produces real results, this world seems to give rise to a sense of reality in a state of ignorance. When true wisdom arises, this unreality vanishes. So I'll read that one more time. Even as an unreal nightmare produces real results, this world seems to give rise to a sense of reality in a state of ignorance. When true wisdom arises, this unreality vanishes. And I feel like that is exactly what happened with my whole experience with the hives. And it's what's been happening now with this clear seeing of this pattern that I deeply know that I don't want anymore. And the contemplation uh, that I'd like to share from seven steps was all fantasies of the mind vanish when truth is seen and realized. The ego mind's need for approval and validation that has been seen recently disappears when clearly seen for what it is. It is not the truth. When looked at directly, it, its foundation crumbles. I don't need someone out there to validate who I am to prove my worth. It is actually laughable when I really sit and look at this system of belief. 
it believes that it needs another made up person out there to validate and approve a made up person here. It also believes who I am, my being, this body, this life's worth depends on the approval and validation of another something out there. How can another approve or disapprove? Does it even really matter? I'm already here. Life is already here moving, seeing, breathing, being in this form. It is. I am. No thing and no one can diminish that. It is impossible. No opinion, judgment, word, rejection, abandonment coming from another confused mind can change the fact that I am here, I am life, I am loved. Illusion cannot change or affect truth. So that is what I have to share for today with all of you. Um, I'd like to ask Asina if she would share um, the second song that I chose. And the second uh, song I chose is Would I Lie to You by the Eurythmics. <laughs> for me, this song clearly points to the back and forth experience we go through with the ego and getting to the point where we just won't buy into the lies anymore. So if you could just play that for us, that'd be great. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's a happy way to just kind of like, hey, I see you. I'm not going to listen to you anymore. <laughs> I love that. Um, I did forget to mention um, that you can donate to Awakening Together by clicking on the link that Sina has posted um, on the chat board by using the QR code in the sanctuary. Um, so uh, if anyone like to share right now. You can go ahead. Regina. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Marisol. First of all, I want to say I do not want to boost your ego. I mean, that would be so friggin' destructive. So, but I do want to talk to the part of the mind that still doubts, right? That's where I'm aiming my words. Uh, what you are doing right now is so important. And you're doing it so perfectly. Um, I know that this is one of the hardest parts of the spiritual path when you're facing all of that darkness. And I know that it gets dark. I've been there. Uh, I know how scary it is. Um, uh, I know how much doubt there is. Um, I also know, you know, all this stuff about trying to look good, how the ego tempts in that way. I mean, I know, I know every single thing you talked about. And that's why I know that you're doing it perfectly. And I just want you to know that. I want you to have faith in yourself, trust yourself, forget about everybody else. Just go through this as honestly and as humbly and as willingly as you can muster. And when you can't realize that was okay too. All right. I love you. Thank you so much for being who you are. Thank you, Regina. Thank you. It's beautiful. If no one else has any other comments or anything they like to say, I'm going to ask Sina if she uh, could play the third song that I chose, which is um, Redemption Song by um, Bob Marley. And I chose this song because it lifts me up every time I hear it and it fuels my determination to see. Thank you, Sina. I love that song so much. <laughs> uh, so uh, I usually, um, uh, I guess we're, we're, we have some time. Uh, it's a little early, <laughs> a few minutes earlier than uh what time we usually end. So if uh, anyone would like to um, share 
on. Sure, Jacqueline, thank you. Uh, thank you, Marisol. Uh, <laughs> it's just so beautiful to see. Um, I've known you for a long time, and it's just beautiful to follow your journey. And uh, you're just such a, a, an authentic demonstration of the willingness to um, to complete the journey. I mean, I just it's just there and it's obvious. And um, if we can all really hear the authenticity uh, in what you shared, we can adopt that same authenticity for ourselves. And that's that's what moves us all along the path. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jacqueline. And you know, and like, and I'd like to share here too, all throughout, you know. Um, there is, oh, this buzzing and nervousness still going on all throughout, regardless of what I shared. So it still plays itself out. So, um, but it's that, uh, willingness to, um, to be okay with it and to not follow it, regardless of it shaking me up inside and telling me I'm screaming, you know, it's, you know, all those classic hits that we all hear all the time. So, um, I feel like it's just worth um, confronting it and, and not following it. So, so we still have a few minutes. If anyone would like to share, yes, uh, Diane. Hello, everyone. Hello, Marisol. Um, that was so beautiful. I was crying and then while you played that song about um, the rhythmics, I was dancing, like everything was, <laughs> I was in that big bowl of whatever was coming up, I was feeling it. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Like I see that the ego is a bo bottomless pit. And that's what I've been experiencing too so often. Like it's so, you're doing great, you're doing great. And I know you're not, you're doing terribly, like, you know, it keeps bringing back what's going on, what's what's going wrong instead of like, you know, and um, just resting in that, in that quietness, like, you know, to still the mind and to, uh, I admire your courage to just letting it all be as it is and laying down in your bed and just let it come. Like I give up, like, you know, and it's just, that's where we have to go sometimes and to see that we come on the, on the other side and we're still here. We're still breathing. I'm still alive. Like, you know, I find that's what I do. I'm, I'm here. Uh, awareness is here. Like, you know, to be completely in the present moment because when I'm caught up into, I call it the um, ego, ego land or like, you know, and it's, it doesn't feel right because it is not right. It's not the truth. So I just want to thank you for what you shared. It really opened my heart and it, it meant a lot to me. And I think I'll listen to it again. And for me, there's, I, I love to play with cards, like just the uh, angel cards and things like that. And there's one card that it says, uh, whatever you do, is it a holy hell yes? Or is it a holy hell no? And for me, getting to know my true self is a holy hell yes. And, and I find that you, you show the ego that it's, it's a holy hell no. Like, you know, you're, he's, he can go out the door with his baggages and you don't need him anymore. So anyways, I want to thank you and I love you very much for doing that today. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. That was wonderful. Thank you. John. Hey, Marisol. I just wanted to tell you that was um, that was really uh, it, it's inspiring in the sense that you're looking at it, looking at everything that's showing on up, and saying, "All right, I'm not believing that anymore. I don't need that anymore." Um, some years ago, going through a little something and. And it just so happened that I was at a retreat where John Mundy was there. And uh, I had to drive him from one place to another. So I thought, well, this is perfect. I'll pick his brain. And this is, you know, I'll have the answer. 
And I told him what was going on. And he says, well, the only thing I can say is something that I heard uh, that Winston Churchill said. I'm like, okay, I'm ready for this. He goes, when you're going through hell, keep going. I'm like, in my mind, I'm going, are you freaking kidding me? That's the advice you got for me. <laughs> and after a couple of years have passed, I can see the beauty of that. It's just, you're going through it. You're not letting it stop you. You're not buying into the bullshit. And um, I applaud you for that. And I, I thank you for that reminder. Uh, yeah, just keep going. That's all we can do. Um, so thank you. That was wonderful today. Thank you, John. That is great. Going through hell, just keep going. <laughs> so this is the end of our weekly gathering. Um, so I will turn the mic over to Sina. Thank you, Sina. And thank you for all, all of you for being here. Been watching our online gathering. It happens weekly on Sundays at 1015 a.m. Eastern Time. To join us live in the sanctuary, visit our website, awakening-together.org. You'll want to click on online sanctuary in the main menu, and then in the drop-down menu, look for how to enter the sanctuary. Right there at the top of the page is a clickable link. We'd love to see you in the sanctuary and join with you in fellowship. Thank you again for watching. Also, please know that if you'd like to stay connected via the Awakening Together channel here on YouTube, you can subscribe and hit the bell for more notifications. We hope to see you in the sanctuary.